folks, and welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Uh, we are here today in the studio, and I'm wearing one of your shirts. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's ironic because this is kind of fitting for the topic that we're going to talk about today, but it's because we're, we're covering off on safety, and you wanted to wear, because you forgot your shirt today, you wanted to wear a high vis vest. On the show. Well, because we obviously we work at a warehouse and we have Snowy's Hive's vests everywhere and I just am wearing a plain grey T-shirt and I just thought to myself, I'll just chuck a Snowy's Hive's vest on because A, it's orange and B, it's got the big fat logo like our shirts do and it'll just look boss, a bit of visual differentiation, something new for our listeners who also happen to watch us on YouTube and they'll just be like, oh, something new. And it was poo-pooed by you, actually, because I mean, technically you're my boss. I, and um, I put my foot down and said, no, there was a mix. I mean, and so you so happen to just have, like, in your drawer at your desk, like <laughs> 20 <laughs> Ben-owned snowy shirts. That's right, yeah. So you were just like, just wear one of mine, <clears throat> Yeah, which is what I'm doing. So, but we don't walk around the office with high-vis vests on. The, the warehouse people do. No, but we anyway. have them in our office because we no. go out to the warehouse anyway. often. They actually look pretty good, we if I do say so myself. We for the episode here. And our videographer said, no, that's way too much orange. He to was do like, no. With, and I said, no way, Snowies can never have too much orange. Anyway. Anyway. Um, anyway, We haven't actually on. even introduced, like, we haven't even said joined by us or anything today. We so haven't. It's really, this is probably our worst Worst in, start yet. so far. But don't forget so, to subscribe wherever you're listening, whether yep. that be uh, on YouTube or through your favourite podcast app. And uh, join Joining in with the, the conversation of the Snowy's Camping Show. Oh, no, sorry, Snowy's Camping Band on Facebook yes. um, is what it's been recently renamed to. Your place is all over so the head, isn't it? We are, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you are here with Ben and Lauren, as usual. Yep. Have I already said that? No, we're doing things backwards today. We are so doing this, it. How this are you, well. by the way? And the last thing, I'm good. The last thing our videographer said when he walked out of the room was, can you keep it short? And we're I, not off I, to I haven't got much time for editing this week. So um, we're three minutes in. Um, and Three minutes we've, in. I think we've done the intro. We yeah. have. We mm. are talking about campsite security slash safety, I suppose. Well, I guess more security than safety. But we've yeah. talked about it before. We've had lots of questions about it over the time and we did talk about it once in a QA. and I I don't know which episode it was, not the last one we did, but the one before maybe like Q&A three yeah. or four or something. Um, and we touched on it a little bit, but we thought we – we we'll sort of deeper. unpack it a bit more in this particular episode. Mm-hmm. Um, this was we've uh, got a couple. We've got a couple of interviews coming up uh, in the podcast as well. So we just wanted to do a nice oh, little yeah. short one okay. around campsite safety and security before we delve into some of the interviews that we've got on the horizon. Well, let's uh, let's jump in now. Someone on the Facebook group, I think, queried or asked about this a while ago. Mm. That's where we. I can't. I meant to write yeah. the person's name down, but I forgot. But we Me do too. take note Apologies. of those things when people say, "Can you talk about this?" We have a bit of a running sheet. And yeah, we, we do. So let's talk about this. Sometimes we don't actually have that much to contribute, but uh, it's a good place for us to get the conversation started, and then we learn from yeah. the community too. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, general, we, we started. You, we've noted vehicle security here because yeah, obviously, yeah. if you're camping, um, caravanning, you've got a vehicle. So, um, vehicle security is a big one. Now, I, I've I have a, a quick story um, around when I travelled. Um, there was always, or moving into some of the remote areas, there's always worry. People worried about security um, mm. in caravan parts with young kids walking through and stealing stuff out of caravans and out of cars and stuff. I just want to say, and I'm pretty sure I've said it before, that it's probably nine times out of ten, probably more than that, it's opportunistic. Yeah, opportunistic for sure. People have left valuables. <clears> it's <throat> the same as if you park your car in the city. Left valuables in sight in an unlocked vehicle. Yep. In a caravan, um, unlocked, they're going to take the opportunity to get in there and steal yeah. some stuff. Yeah. And I heard stories in numerous places around Australia of this happening. And every time it's been that they left the caravan unlocked, they left the car unlocked or something. Yeah. So most of these things you can get around by a bit of common sense. Just lock yeah. Your stuff I mean, up, I don't know outside. if you've seen it, but sometimes people you just see cruising <laughs> down the street and they're just grabbing a handle, testing it, grabbing a handle, yeah. testing it as they just cruise down the street. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, fortunately, but that's that's sort of the style of criminal mastermind that yeah. is likely to be hitting your stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, very, very unlikely to be in there for anything more than a bit of pocket change or something valuable. Yeah. Yep. So vehicle security, tinted windows, keeping things out of sight yep. inside the vehicle is obvious. Just at least stick things under the seat, keep yeah. bags out of sight. A bit hard when your vehicle's loaded. Yeah. But at least the um, the high value items, just keep them tucked away. Well, I know like in my grandparents have a four wheel drive and in the back um, they've actually got the same one as you. And in the back they have those um, silver insulated window oh, yep. panels and then they've also got a, a, a cargo cage mm-hmm. and the cargo cage has like it's – you can see through it, but there's stuff hanging off it and it's not – if someone's having a look through the front of the car or whatever, they're not going to look over the cargo cage. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, everything's just kept in the back and there's nothing like your mobile phones or your wallet or your keys or anything sort of opportunistic yep. in the front within view. I think there's something to be said from covering too much up too because if you've got it too locked down, you're kind of saying it's worth having a go because I've got stuff in here. Whereas yeah. I've always worked on the theory that if I – whatever I've left at camp or left in my vehicle – Whatever's visible isn't worth the effort to try and get to. So they yeah, move yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I totally know what you're saying. And we did talk about in one of the weird and wonderful, uh, the second weird and wonderful episode we did, Tobal lock boxes. Those little lock boxes that slide in, like the little tongue of them slide into it's your Tobal hitch yep. or receiver or whatever it is. Um, and it's like a little key lock box or whatever, yeah. which is. A nifty idea. Yep, good place to keep keys and small items. Um, um, even a car alarm, yeah. like deterrent. So if you've got a car alarm, obviously that's going to deter them if they try to break in. But just a little flashing light in the dash or some of those security measures. Sometimes just, I've uh, wondered even when you see cars with the flashing light, do they even have a car alarm or is that little flashing light there just a thing that you can DIY install on your dash Well, I think it's for the same like with, $3? It's the same with um, properties. Um, yeah. The, the dummy camera Things is there's like a camera dome. There's often there's no camera in it. It's yeah, just yeah. there as a dummy. And opportunistic so people, deterrent. they're probably just not going to take the risk, are yeah. they? But um, so that's a vehicle. But moving on to uh, actual campsite. Actual I mean, campsite. The, really, mm. if you're setting up camp somewhere where you pretty much intend to just be the whole time, mm. you don't have to worry too much. It's more so if you're setting up camp and you're going away on day trips mm-hmm. or somewhere where you're camping, you're going to be going, you know, on a big hike just off the edge of your campground or things like that and you're going to be away from your camp um, mm-hmm. ground for a reasonable amount of time. Um But depending on the area or region that you're camping in, do some research before you go, determine what the area is like and if theft and and things like that is high. And if it is high, it might be worth considering instead of staying at, you know, just a broad campground heading to a privately owned caravan park. Just there's Um, more people around. So there's A, more people around, but also those are often fenced Mm -hmm. and have sort of like a single access point, it's very difficult for people to just walk in off the street casually and and suss out everyone's campsites without being noticed. And if you're in an area that has higher um, incidences of that happening, park staff and people, locals will already be aware of that. Yeah. So that might be your safest bet. If you're in a caravan, so it's obvious just lock your caravan as you would your house. That's yeah. a pretty pretty straightforward one. At all times, when you go to bed at night, just lock it. Yep. Um, when you're out for the day, just lock it. Lock yep. your caravan just as you would your house. A tent's a bit harder. You can use padlocks on a tent, but people, if they really want to get in, it's pretty easy just to slash a tent to get into it. So my theory has always been, and, and I don't caravan. Um, I haven't got a caravan, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm in a tent. And lots of time setting up camp, saying staying somewhere and out for day trips for the day. My campsite's been just left in, as a minimal manner, nothing flashy. I've just probably got the table and maybe a couple of chairs. I've packed my Helinox chairs away because yeah, they're yeah. quite expensive. They go back in the car. Yeah. The tent sits there with mats and some sleeping gear inside and that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. And yeah. if that got stolen, it's a pain in the bum, but it's a balance between how much I stress about it and how much I spend – how much time I spend packing up every day versus enjoying the time yeah. without worrying about it. So I leave the minimal stuff that I know I can replace pretty much while I'm on the go, if need yeah. be, potentially under insurance. Um, and anything valuable, paperwork, p- money, um, cards, um, electronic devices, all go in the car with me for the day. I totally agree with you because <clears throat> f- for me personally, and to be fair, I haven't really – um, large portion of my camping is done in either fairly well-populated areas that doesn't 
really have any issues with that sort of stuff or super, super out bush in the middle of nowhere where you might not see anyone for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. I've sort of not done none of my camping has really been anywhere else Mm -hmm. in terms of where theft or stuff has been an issue. So from my perspective, that has never really been on my radar. If we've left campsite for the day, we've literally just zipped the tents up for for the sake of, you know, bugs and stuff like that. Or even if it's hot, we've just left them wide open. Our campsite is basically just left. Mm. Even our fridge to a certain extent, if it's out of the the car, which it isn't now because it's in the van, um, we sort of never really worried too much about that and we've never had issues either. Mm-hmm. I think that um, there is an argument, like you said, about the car before. There is an argument to if you pack most of your stuff away and you zip it up in your tent, then it's out of sight, out of mind, and so mm-hmm. people just cruising past won't necessarily take a look or if they do go to take a look, there's like a padlock and because they're opportunistic, they're probably not going to come prepared to cut Mm. your padlock off or with a knife to like cut your tent open or or whatever. Um, So that in a lot of cases can be enough just having your zipped up tent. I think so. But then also there is argument or some people that think, well, if you zip your tent up and you sort of pack everything up, is that a sign to say that you do have stuff worth stealing? And, you know, if people want to get into your tent, they're going to get into your tent anyway. I think maybe it just comes down to peace of mind and like Mm. common sense for Mm -hmm. you as a camper and the gear that you have. And maybe like you said, don't leave anything out that you couldn't afford to just replace if you had to. Mm-hmm. And like for the most part, your camp chairs, unless you know they're super expensive. I mean, I don't want to be. You can continue your holiday if your camp chairs get flogged. Yeah, as yeah. It's like, and I is. don't want to be, um, like say, <clears throat> oh, you know, you can replace a camp chair because some camp chairs are two hundred bucks, and you know, yeah. it's not easy to replace them. So I'm not trying to be dismissive in that sort of sense, but you know, it's significantly less achievable for people to replace $800 solar panels yeah, or a $1,400 fridge yep. or, you know, things yep. like that. So um, from that side of things, just a bit of common sense, yep. I reckon. I think on that too, just be conscious about how you look in camp when you're living in camp as well. Because if you go, oh, it's one thing to have all the gear and want to show it off, that's great. So you set up it in the evening with your yeah, yeah. solar panel and you've probably got a projector and a telly and all your all your bits set up. Look, I've got all this great stuff. You look like the you're op- someone who has something to steal. That's right. The yeah, opportunistic yeah. <laughs> people walk past and go, well, that stuff went somewhere Yeah. Um, and you're not here at the moment, so I'm going to dig around to see if I can find it. Yeah, so that's true. My, my solar panel, uh, I have a, a folding um, solar pa- uh, semi-flexible solar panel. Yep. I generally put that flat on my roof rack. Um, so that you can't really see it. Yeah. It, it kind of sits down below the lip. It's not out there for people to see it. So I'm not saying I've got a solar panel to steal necessarily. There's a cable. People yeah. can work it out, but I'm not being flashy about my setup. I'm just um, – when I when I leave camp, it literally looks like a, a tent and some tables. Yeah. Or a table, sorry. That's pretty much all that there is. The stove, I leave the stove out. Yeah. Um, all replaceable stuff. So, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I think also another um, important thing is if you're camping around other people, just sort of get to know your neighbours. Like obviously Mm. we've done a campsite etiquette episode before and it's like, you know, don't get in their grill and, you know, invade their space and overstay your welcome and all that sort of jazz. But at least get a vibe for them and get a feel of who they are and if you're going on a day trip, see if they're going to be hanging around and if they can just keep an eye on your campsite and then, you know, you can obviously do the same in return. And I think generally – Everyone has super good intentions. Like, I think so. You know, I know why I go camping. You know why you go camping. We both love it. It's something we have in common. We yep. both want to enjoy the experience. We'll look out for each other's stuff. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. Um, but you, you're more likely to do that if you've said hi to someone and had a bit of a chat with them and yep. sort of, you know, have some sort of establishment there. I remember once going, uh, seeing my neighbours, uh, they left the bread in the middle of the table and then went out for the day. So the magpies had a field day. <laughs> Different kind of things. <laughs> and, and I got back to camp and looked down and I thought, oh, no, that, there's, there's probably 70% of that loaf left. So I grabbed it and put it on their table under a bowl as best I could and I thought, I don't, 
they're going to look at this and not want to eat it anyway because <laughs> something has devoured it. But right, oh, I don't know why that's on the table. That's um, pretty I'll, funny. I'll mention one other thing too, and the actual setup of your campsite is um, a an important consideration too. And I say that because I camped once somewhere where I got told a story about how people were in their campsite um, just enjoying the evening, but their car was unlocked, which was behind them. So on the other side of the car, people – came into the unlocked door and were just opp- opportunistic uh, and yeah, stole yeah, things yeah. out of the car while they were in the campsite. Yeah. So if you're in, once again, this was in a town yeah. um, where you can have issues with young kids and yeah, yeah. alcohol and that sort of thing can become a problem in some towns. Yeah. Um, if you're in a place like that, then just when you, if you can't see or monitor that your car door, just lock it. Just yeah. Finish the car, lock your car door. Yeah. Um, have all your tent doors facing such that you can kind of see what's going on with all your gear. Yeah, yeah. Don't be paranoid about it. Just have a think about it. Yeah, con- yeah. like yeah. Again, back to that common sense. I yeah. have seen, um, I have seen some campsites where they've got uh, those really thick cable loops and padlocks, and also some chains and things like that. Um, and you know, places where they've just bunched all of their furniture together and just run a chain mm. through it. Because if you're an opportunistic thief, you're not going to be legging it with seven camp chairs all chained together. Um, same thing with like eskies and fridges and things like that. People aren't coming with angle grinders, you know what I mean? They're just yeah. they're just it's um, a quick opportunity, a thing. quick opportunity thing. Yep. So if you're somewhere like that and packing up your camp completely and hiding stuff and and that way of things isn't really plausible or just po- popping them in your tent and hoping out of sight, out of mind isn't isn't going to be enough. That is potentially something extra that you can consider. Yeah. Um, but I would say the chances of you actually like the places where you would actually need to go that far aren't would be sort of on the smaller percentage of, of spots. Yeah, in where general. I heard it was in caravan parks within certain townships, remote yeah, yeah. townships and that sort of thing. So yeah. um, be conscious of it, but don't be paranoid about it. Just be aware yeah. and be be prepared that something might happen. Yeah. But try and make sure that if something does happen, it happens to the things that aren't going to stop your holiday. Yeah. You can continue on. I mean, even if your tent gets flogged, you can and I mean, buy another tent and keep also, going. Also, if you think about it, there's no way that you can be a hundred percent foolproof. Like no. even with your home at home, you know, I've never personally ever been broken into. I've had my car broken into, I think twice in my life, never had anything from my campsite stolen, never had anything from a house stolen. Some people have had their houses broken into and it's not because they've done anything wrong per se. It's just unlucky. happened to be unlucky or the luck of the draw. And so sometimes that happens. Like I think the comment that we had in the Facebook group was, um, you know, generally they'd never had an issue, but they went on a two day trip in, or they were day day two into a trip in Western Australia and, and their car window got smashed. And I think that I don't really think there's anything that you could have done to stop that from happening. It's just really bloody unlucky. Yeah. Um, yep. and it just happened to be your vehicle that that person came across that day. But if somebody wants to smash your car window to get into your car, you can't stop that from happening. No, that's just that's just irritating. Yeah, it's very <laughs> um, irritating. I think you apply the same sort of things too with what we've just mentioned to gear when it's on, say, your roof rack while you're travelling yeah. as well because the amount of times I've parked in a in a town with my my tent and my swag and my sleeping gear all just strapped to the top of the car. Yeah. It's all tied down really well. So it's not – it's more than just quickly running past and snatching it off the roof but – I guess people could stand there and look like they own the car and be taking something off and walk away with my tent. But if I – Can you imagine someone I, just having a quick getaway with a giant with RV5? RV5. <laughs> 25 kilos. <laughs> I'm just imagining one of those like um, Laurel and Hardy sketches yeah. where they're running along and their mate's like, wait, and then they turn yep. around and then it's like people – anyway, and moving. They go through a door and they're like – You know, like the ladder, yeah, yeah, the ladder door. sketch. <laughs> anyway. Um, but uh, if I was paranoid and tried to secure that with a lock every time I packed – the gear on my roof rack not over four months of travel, it would have added a whole lot of stress to, yeah. the, to the trip. So um, I chose not to, to secure that. I'm not saying don't do it. Yeah, yeah, for but, sure. Um, you know, it was well tied down and was quicker than a walk past and grab it sort of scenario yeah. to steal it. You did mention um, insurance before. Your camping gear can be covered under your home and contents insurance. Did you get insurance before your big trip? That's a good question. I can't remember what I did. Um, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we looked into it and I think we might have um, extended some insurances or something for a certain period from memory. Yeah. 
I can't remember what that was. Yeah, just, just like temporarily let, sort of I cover think, you a bit. Yeah, I think we just had to let insurance know this is our intention. Yeah, what what we what we're doing. Um, I'd have to look. I can't remember what we did actually. Yeah, it's only it was a few years ago now. But um, yeah, but you can certainly do that. Isn't that yeah, really but, sad to think about? That was like two, two years ago. And I've hardly been camping since. Yeah, it's like, miserable. It's really sad. Don't you're getting me um, down now? But there are there are really good um, insurance companies. That are specific to four by four travel. Like the club four by four is one. Um, yeah. That um, ha- have a look at your insurance because to make I know sure that I know that some general insurers will cover camping gear, but be really aware of what the terms and conditions are because mm. some of them might have stipulations. I mean, you know, when you insure your car and you have to say if you're parking it on the street or a carport or a lock garage or, yep. or what have you, um, things like that might affect your premium and yep. they might not insure you if you're just going to a general campsite in a national park, yep. but they might insure you if you're going to a, a, a private right. caravan right. park yep. or, you know, they might have considerations of how you set up or what the efforts or the steps you've taken to try and secure your gear and you mm-hmm. might need to be mindful of that and maybe even take photos of your campsite every now and then or just double check those sorts of things um, yeah, because it is possible. In- inquire, uh, t- tell you, talk to your insurer about yeah. what you're doing, have a look at what other options are out there, look at the costs and work out if, cost that, v- if that cost is yeah. going to give you the peace of mind you need to enjoy your trip because the most important thing is that you enjoy your trip at the end of the day. Yeah. So if you're going to be so paranoid every day about losing stuff that that cost of insurance is going to help you enjoy the trip, then it's probably money well spent. Yeah, that's true. Peace of mind goes a long way. But according to um, the insurance industry, the most common items stolen from camping and caravan sites are mobile phones, wallets, bicycles, eskies, fishing gear, tow balls, and roof rack systems. See, roof rack system, like that's not a quick thing to remove. It's not a quick thing to remove. So where are you for as long as it takes someone to flog your roof rack system? Off the top of your car. Uh, yeah. I mean, Weird, isn't it? But anyway, that's apparently the list of the most common things. Yeah. So obviously you don't have chairs in there and you don't have sleeping bags no. or camp stoves. So they're the sort of the things at tables. So yep. they're sort of things that people really aren't necessarily going to worry about and they yep. probably don't have good resale value either. But yeah. the only other thing probably – do you have anything else to add, by the way? Um, no, I was just thinking uh, if there's anything else to add, but I think we've covered it pretty well. I think the most important thing is don't be paranoid about it. Do what's going to give you peace of mind. Yeah. So you can enjoy your trip, but don't be paranoid about it and use some common sense. Same yeah. as you do at home. And I don't know if I've just had the luxury of never having to think about it too much or whether or not not thinking about it too much is realistically just the way to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can depend where you can. De- yeah, well. depends. Yeah. Very yeah. much depends. Have a think. Uh, the, interested the, on the, the chat sort of on the Facebook group. A hundred percent of like where else say. people yeah. live in Australia and the common places you go and whether or not it's yep. an issue and sort of what you do and things like that. Yep. But the only sort of thing I'll leave on a parting note, I'd say, is home safety mm-hmm. is probably another element. If you're going away, maybe save your social media posts <laughs> until yep. you get back. Yep, good because point. if you're being like, yeah, I'm going away, you know, I can't mm-hmm. wait to go to the Grampians for a week. You're just like, yeah, so great. My house is going to be empty for a week. And I mean, not that. You're telling the you, world. Yeah, you're telling the world. I mean, hopefully your family and friends don't mm. come and flog all your gear, but mm. You know, they might comment on your post and that might, who knows, social, who don't know, who knows how social media works. I know yeah. you don't, but it's like you never know where that information is going to go and who's going to see it and Absolutely. where it's going to come I mean, from. They, so They need to match who you are and know where you live. But I know I didn't post it, I don't anyway, on social media, but even if I did, I probably wouldn't have posted it openly yeah, like on social media anyway. Yeah, like you mostly kept your trip under wraps That's really. Right. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, the house was left um, – for four months, um, but people went around and checked on it. Yeah. It was actually kept leading, leading up to Christmas, so my sister-in-law stored all of their Christmas, Christmas presents gear in there. there. That's so nice. they went around and checked every now and then. I'm pretty sure we just said insurance to our insurance company. Uh, nearly fell off your chair. Um, we said this is this is what we're doing, going to be away from the house for, yeah, for four yeah. months just so they're, they're aware, I yeah. think. Um, it, but, yeah, social definitely don't advertise the fact that you go on trying. Yeah. Um, you ha- same principle with your house, trying not to leave it looking like it's not lived in. Yeah, for sure. have a timer on a lamp. I think we put a timer on a lamp in the front room that turned on and nice. off. Nice. Okay, um, that's cool. Each night. So yeah. it just looked like someone was home. Yeah, nice it's one. It's a small thing. Yeah. But anyway, um, that might possibly be our shortest episode ever. We're under, well, our timer 
We're looking at 25 here. minutes. Not looking at 25 minutes. But, Sorry, but the, we, our time is just off the side of the camera. But we rambled on for a good few minutes before, yeah, we did. so that might be a close to 20 minute episode. So yeah, our video short, video. sharp, and shiny. Yep. Our podcast um, editor is going to be particularly happy with us. Yes, this and week. some of our listeners out there like a short, shami, sharp, shami. Short, short sharp, shami. Let's episode. not make it any longer than it needs to be. Short, sharpie <laughs> episode. And if you're one of those listeners, I hope you're happy. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in any again. Security tips. Let us know. It's known as Camping Banter Facebook group. Keen to know everyone's or ideas. Or chuck them in the YouTube comments YouTube if comments. that's where you are. Yep. Anyone's ideas on how you can just take that, that stress out of theft. Cool. We'll see you again in a fortnight. See you later. Catch you later.